Comme je fus votre origine, je serai votre fin. One. We could tell in the beginning that something was different in these people, and it was something that was different in a way that they couldn't control. But we had no idea is this the kind of thing that would be different from uh, uh, something that they learned over the course of life, or something that they, uh, 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 that they were born with. That sex network, which is cabled together, is all cabled through that same chunk of connective tissue, which I found was different in the pedophiles. So it's not that these areas of the brain are different in the pedophiles, it's that the network that they're supposed to form isn't connected properly. So it's accidentally identifying things in the environment that should evoke a parental nurturant instinct, but instead it's provoking a sexual and erotic instinct, almost like a literal cross-wiring in the brain. Uh, from all the science, yep. from all your science, did it answer the question, are pedophiles born or made? Interestingly, the, the science in general says that pedophiles appear to be born, not made. The stuff that we've seen that are different in pedophiles in their brain functioning uh, is all stuff that doesn't happen uh, during the course of life. Are you saying that for the pedophile, their attraction to children is natural? For they them? experience it as natural. They did not pick it. They come to realize it over the course of life. The way that most of them describe it uh, starts out like any of us. When they're, you know, 8, 9, 10, 11 years old, they get crushes on people around their age, 8, 9, 10, 11 years old. Uh, and then most of us, as we grow older, we continue to get crushes on and experience attractions to people roughly around our age, growing into adulthood as we grow into adulthood. For the pedophiles, however, when they start becoming 14, 15, 16, they're still getting crushes and finding themselves attracted to 8, 9, 10 years old. So it takes them until there's enough contrast between their own age and the people they're attracted to before they start realizing there's something different about them. That implies it's not a choice for them, that it's actually a sexual orientation. Correct. All the evidence suggests that they did not pick to be attracted to children any more than the rest of us picked to be attracted to adults. So that's a big call, isn't it? Uh, it is a big call, uh, and, I don't, uh, and I don't make it easily. I don't think anybody makes it easily. So, if it is biological, mm -hmm. if the brain is wired that way, mm -hmm. it also implies, doesn't it, that the wiring cannot be changed, there is no cure. That's what it seems to suggest now. I hesitate ever to say that the future will not produce some technology that I could not, uh, could not predict. But we don't have any technology, we don't have any surgery, we don't have any intervention currently that really can impact the basic connective structure of the brain. No medication. Uh, no medication, no therapy, no surgery, that, that nobody's uh, produced... Uh, well, aside uh, from castration. Uh, well, that's not exactly a cure. We're not, that wouldn't turn a pedophile, uh, castration wouldn't turn a pedophile into a non-pedophile. Castration, of course, removes a person's sex drive. Now, that can be very beneficial. A lot of people who are attracted to something that they cannot enact would rather live a life without a sex drive than a sex drive they have to spend every minute of every day actively suppressing. But it's not a cure in the sense that it's turning a pedophile into a non-pedophile, that they will now be attracted to adults and be able to, you know, have a relationship, you know, uh, uh, become a parent and so on. Two. So they don't care about our freedom, our security, or our democracy. And I'll talk about Ukraine for a little bit. If President Biden really cared about the people of Ukraine, who are suffering the most, who are struggling and who are dying every day this war goes on, he would have done everything possible to try to prevent this war from starting in the first place. He didn't. Putin invaded Ukraine. Well then, at that point, President Biden, our Commander-in-Chief, if he really cared about the people of Ukraine and what they were facing, he would have tirelessly worked every day to try to bring this war to an end as quickly as possible. He didn't. Not only did he not do that, it's even worse. He and his administration actively blocked attempts by Russian Ukrainian officials themselves who were already meeting 
to try to find some resolution to their differences, to bring about an end to this, they said, no, walk away. Stop the negotiations. At every point where there have been efforts to bring about a peaceful resolution, a diplomatic resolution to the end of this war, President Biden's administration have stopped it. Should, it should cause every one of us to question his priorities their priorities, the priorities of both Democrats and Republicans in Congress who want to see this war continue. Three. He needs to cut back on his cocaine use. It's obviously affecting his mental faculties. Look, the reality is Russia has not been out invading other countries. Russia has not been carrying out expeditionary military adventures, with the exception of Syria, where it was invited to come in back in 2015, I believe, to come in and help Syria fight off Islamic rebels that were being funded by the United States and by the United Kingdom. This notion that Russia is this aggressive power, is it's a lie. And do not forget that Zelensky, when he ran for president, ran on the promise that he would bring peace. And once in office, he did a complete 180. He embraced people like the Azov Battalion, the neo-Nazis, active Nazis, and embraced the elimination and erasing Russian culture and Russian heritage. What he's saying is delusional. Russia will end up crushing the Ukrainian military and NATO in the process. And Zelensky, he'll be lucky to survive. If he survives, he'll be in exile. Four. Nous, les Africains, on se plaint. La France nous infantilise. L'Occident nous infantilise. On se retrouve en Russie. Un chef d'État qui a pratiquement bloqué tous les ports qui permettaient au pays de s'approvisionner en payant. Ouais. Pas en mendiant. En payant. <rire> il mène une guerre, il bloque tous les ports et il dit, vous qui êtes mes amis, je vais vous donner du blé gratuitement. Est-ce qu'il y a une manière autre d'infantiliser des gens Et vous voyez les flatteurs d'applaudir pour parler comme La Fontaine. Mais quelle image nous donnons de l'Afrique Voilà la grande question. On est dans un triangle, le triangle de Cartman, le triangle dramatique, où il y a le persécuteur, le sauveur et la victime. L'Afrique est dans la logique de la victime qui est persécutée et qui a besoin d'un sauveur. Poutine apparaît comme le sauveur. Je suis de votre côté. L'Occident vous persécute. C'est moi qui peux vous sauver. Mais dans le triangle de Kapman, le sauveur, à un moment donné, lui-même devient persécuteur. Parce qu'après, quand vous voulez vous en débarrasser, il vous rappelle que c'est lui qui vous a sauvé dans telle situation et il prend la place du persécuteur. Aujourd'hui, pour ne pas faire de digression en Centrafrique, vous pensez que Touadéra, c'est ça son nom, oui. est capable de dire aujourd'hui à Wagner et à la Russie, j'ai fait mes deux mandats, je m'en vais Il est otage de Wagner. Il est otage de tout ce qui est transaction économique et il va modifier les constitutions de telle sorte qu'il soit là tant qu'il fera l'affaire de la Russie et de Wagner. Idem pour les pays où il y a eu des coups d'État. On a cité tout à l'heure des présidents qui ont fait des putschs et qui commencent petit à petit à troquer le treillis contre la veste. <rire> Ne vous tendez pas si c'est du lard du cochon. Si vous avez pas